All right, hello, all you beautiful people out there. Um, somebody asked for a video showing the basics of logging your car with Ingenuity, so I took it upon myself to shoot a crappy video and hopefully explain to the best of my abilities uh, the very basics of logging uh, your car with Ingenuity. So, uh, pardon my cold, I can't speak very well, but hopefully I get the point across. We're here in the middle of nowhere, in the uh, middle of the night, on a uh, closed track, of course. Be sure to always be as safe as possible when logging your car because you will see speeds uh, over the speed limit. So, uh, dyno is best. If you have to, find the most remote area uh, that you can to get to. Safety first. Uh, with that in mind, um, I'm sitting here right now. The car is up to temperature, idling. I've got my Tactrix cable plugged in underneath the steering column and plugged in to my laptop. Um, with that, I have the Ingenuity logger open and I have gone to the dashboard mode which shows you a nice easier to read while driving view of the output uh, from the various parameters that you choose and um, so it's important to remember that the more parameters you choose to log the less your resolution becomes in other words the more parameters you want to watch uh, the fewer updates per second the logger can capture which is uh, more of a limitation with the ECU than the software, I believe. All right, so a lot of people don't know what parameters they should log. There's over here on the far left column, I hope you can see this. This entire list, quite long, are all the different parameters you can log. Some direct from the ECU, some are calculated. But uh, I'll show you the ones that I usually use as a general health checkup for the car, if you will. And uh, starting from the top left, it's uh, engine load calculated, engine speed, RPM, ignition total timing, injector duty cycle, intake air temperature, not correction advance, manifold relative pressure corrected, mass airflow in grams per second, mass airflow sensor voltage, primary wastegate duty cycle, throttle opening angle, ignition advanced multiplier and then I have my wideband set up which uh, using the Ingenuity test release uh, version 774 you can uh, look at your wideband right alongside your other parameters that one's optional for those of you that don't have a wideband then I have feedback not correction and fine learning not correction and I put those last three all in the same bottom row so they're easiest they stand out a lot because they are um, three of the more important of the parameters that you want to watch when you're logging your car. Not that you can really do a whole lot about it, but you can shut a run down early if you see some a lot of a knock correction going on, uh, signaling activity from the knock sensor. So, when you have all the parameters selected, your next step, go up to the Ingenuity Logger menu, hit Settings, choose your log file output location, which is just a folder on your hard drive, I've got some of mine sorted by date. Find the folder, hit OK, or open rather. Now, so you don't have to click this tiny button when you're logging the car to start a log. Go to settings and make sure that control file logging with defogger switch is uh, activated. And what that will do is allow you to hit your defogger switch um, to start a log file and to stop a log file. Basically you can hit this guy right here and uh, that will start and stop a log file. So what we're going to do tonight is basically show you how to do a, a single pull which you will start the log file, do the pull, and then immediately stop the log file. I like to do mine in fourth gear in the STI. I've heard the WRX, uh, Forrester, LGT guys like to use third gear, but it's up to, your, up to you uh, and your prerogative. So uh, with that in mind, we're all ready now. All we need to do is go out on the road and uh, do a pull or two. So let's go out and do that. All right, everybody, ready to do the power pull. Everyone, uh, we have our parameters set up. Laptop sitting in the passenger seat. And um, now, I guess, the legal mumbo jumbo. You all know the drill. Same stuff as always. You can blow your car up tuning it yourself. Um, so make sure that you have a good running car 
make sure that the parts and everything are installed right and you have a good map on the car before doing any logging. Uh, a data log will not fix a mechanical problem or an ECU mapping problem, so I don't think you can just go data log and it'll make everything better. In this case, uh, the map I've got is pretty decent. I'm still in the uh, middle of fine-tuning it, so everything's good, and we'll do a power pull. And it's going to get kind of loud and shaky, so I'll just narrate the best I can, and uh, we're going to do a fourth gear pull. Starting about 2,500. Okay, so we're ready to the pull. I'm going to hit the defrogger, the, uh, defogger switch and do the pull. Alright. And coming back down, I hit the uh, defrogger switch. And now we are stopped logging to file. And uh, that will now have generated a log file with uh, the great majority being that fourth gear pull from just a second ago. And now that you have that, it's ge generally a good idea. I like to do two pulls um, just for an increased sample size. You never know, something odd might have happened in one. I'm going to make sure um, consistency is what you're after, repeatability. Um, you don't want to chase your tail if you just do one pull at a time. So we'll go up the road a little bit and do another one. down to about 2500 again. I'm going to hit the defogger switch and do another pull. Alright, now we're slowing back down. And now we have two log files of fourth gear pulls that we can analyze. Okay, now we are back safe and sound, back in the bat cave, ready to look at our data log, or data logs in this case, we made two, and uh, now we can use that information to analyze what was going on during that pull and make the necessary corrections in the map. So in this case, it was just a general overall health of the car based on the parameters we selected. Uh, if you're going to fine-tune other parameters, of course, there are a, uh, you may choose to log fewer parameters for more uh, tuning resolution. You'll get more updates from the ECU per second, a little bit faster refresh rate. But in this case, um, everything went went great, and we now have a log file of a fourth gear pull uh, that you can use to post up online and get other people's feedback about it if you're not too sure of this stuff yourself and uh, become more familiar with everything. So in this particular pull, um, I am still... Uh, boosting a little bit too high than I'd like, so I'm going to go back down and uh, work on the wastegate tables. And um, I am, I have just an itsy weensy bit of fine learning not correction. Um, just one degree there that I need to address. But everything's coming along good. That's just uh, one more step in the road of tuning your own car. I hope this video helped you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.